Hi, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm going to show you today how to turn some of your small hooked rug pieces into pillows, um, which is actually a lot easier than you would think it would be. It takes a little bit of sewing um, skill, and a lot of hookers are also um, quilters, so that would come in handy there, or you maybe sew. But regardless, we're talking about very simple amounts and um, uh, intricacy of, of stitching, very simple. So this is something that everybody should be able to do. And I'm gonna show you what you need, just your basic things to be able to do this. It's a very simple um, list of everyday things that you're gonna to use to put these pillows into cushions. Things you can get at your local craft store or online. Um, so what I've got now is a, is a pillow that's almost finished with the hook, with the sewing together, and then one that I'm about to start. So we'll go through that one beginning to end and see how that goes. So for example, this pillow here um, is going to be, is in the process of being stitched now. And I've stitched these sides of it so far. I'm gonna backtrack in a second and I'm this far of the way through. So I'm gonna finish this one and then I'm gonna start a new one from scratch. So the things that you need to turn your hooked rug into a cushion and this is going to be a cushion with two sides. I'm not talking about a cushion with a long rectangular strip that makes it three-dimensional um, with, with a lot of height and depth. This is like a two to three inch cushion that has a top and a bottom, okay, like this. Something for the couch or whatever. So you need obviously your, your squared, rectangled, regular sized um, rug that you're turning into a cushion. You need this kind of foam, um, cushion foam, upholstery foam from Joann's, Michael's, whatever. Um, this is two inch here. And of course it will be more than two inch when you put your front and your back on, uh, attach it. It's going to be even thicker and more plush. If you're in between sizes and you want a little more than two inch, more like a three inch, you could always wrap quilt batting around it. Once it's in the pillow, layer that on or squeeze it in there with quilt batting to make it a little bit uh, thicker. That's just the thought but you need cushioning and they sell this foam and it seems like it costs a fortune, like $54 a yard or something. Um, all I can say to that is sometimes you can get it like I did yesterday at 60% off or you use coupons to get 60% off because I ended up getting this giant piece. This is maybe um, like something like 30 by, uh, maybe not 30, maybe 25 by, I think 14 or 15 for like $6. So that's that's crazy how little that is. So don't get sticker shock immediately when you see what foam costs. You can also remove foam from a kit, uh, pillow from Goodwill or something like that. Just get the foam out of it uh, as long as it's clean and you trust it. But this is expensive, but just do, try to do deals with it to make it not insanely expensive. So besides the piece itself that you're turning into a pillow and your foam, you're going to need some kind of backing. And for a pillow, you want it to be a bit strong. So I had a ton of this backing. It was just white. I don't even know what it was. I got it in a lot of stuff that I bought and it, it appears to be some kind of woven poly backing. It might even be good for rug hooking. So I might try hooking with it later, but I cut off a piece that was just about two inches larger than the piece that I'm doing around. You're going to need it to be larger. So about two inches on every side larger and I dyed it. And because it's poly, it didn't dye super, super well. It sometimes it sometimes does, synthetics. Um, this one didn't do super well, but it certainly went from white to like blue, off blue. So I'm happy with that. I, I dyed them all different colors, all my pillow backings. So I cut it just a bit bigger than the piece itself. This is the piece, the next piece I'm going to work on. And this is the size of the backing I did. I mean, it's going to be extra, but I like to be safe and not have to do things 10 times, although I usually do. So, so far I've got my rug hooked piece, I've got my foam, which can be cut with a kitchen knife, and I've got my backing. Your backing can be something you found like this that I already had in my workroom, or uh, corduroy, or wool, if you're okay with using wool on the, in the back, because of course wool is worth a bit more. Um, anything really heavyweight that's not gonna rip when you sit on it is gonna be fine. It's probably not a process you wanna keep repeating over and over. So choose something that you think works well. Um, strong backing, the piece itself, the foam, get the heavy duty, the heavy weight uh, thread. So this is called, I think it's just called, this is the Guterman's, um, just, I think it's just called heavy. 
and it was at the craft store too. It's a little bit, it's not waxed. It's nothing like that. It's not the quilting thread. It's just heavy thread. Anything a little bit thick, extra thick is going to be great. Um, but definitely choose something extra thick. This was like $3 for a hundred yards and I just chose a neutral color. So this is going to work great as your thread. I always have a few stick pins sitting around like three or four for this pillow project. Obviously a pair of scissors. And the needle I got is probably still in this. The needle I got is actually a carpet needle. So a carpet needle is a little bit on the long side. It's got a, a large eye. It's got the thread through it because I'm partway through the stitch. And it's got a sharp point, not like a tapestry point, a sharp point. This is actually called a carpet needle. This came in a mixed pack of replacement needles that was like $4 for five or six different kinds of needles. But the carpet one will work best. You are, you are making a carpet, after all, into a pillow. So that will work the best. I also, as my last two things to have around when I'm doing these kinds of projects, I have around my rug hook and a little bit of um, a, a few little worms um, or noodles, whatever you call them, f that are the same color as the project. Because I find when I'm going along, that's a, this is a side I haven't finished yet, sewing, sometimes I think, oh, you know, I'm off by just a couple stitches here or there. And I don't want to make a big production out of it because I've already gone real far with, with prepping this piece for sewing. So I just keep this handy. And like this morning when I was working on this, I just added three or four stitches to the side to even it out a bit. So those are the supplies. The piece itself, the backing, the foam, which can be cut with a kitchen knife, um, the heavyweight thread, a pair of scissors, a couple of pins, and your carpet needle. Those are the supplies that you're going to need to do this. The rest is just going to be technique and figuring out um, how how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it, but then you're going to find your way of doing it that's going to be a little bit different than mine. And both are going to be right and both are going to work and both are going to be safe and secure in terms of finishing the pillow. So let me bend this down a little bit. I'm going to do a close-up cam in a minute. What I'm doing here is I am partway through this pillow already, so I'm just going to work on this for a minute to show you the the process and then I'm going to pause and start start at the beginning with that next pillow. The process is going to be here's my hooked rug that I have trimmed down after I hooked it. Of course it was all surged and everything at one time. I've trimmed it down. I folded it into itself with nice sharp corners and pressed it with the iron. I've already steamed the finished piece and I've turned it over and I've ironed the sides down. I've even taken a notch out there. Like when you do a Christmas presents, you do like a diagonal cut to make it sit better. You don't have to. And then I steamed it down and now it wants to be like that. And I'm going to do all my trimming on the edges later, but it's a nice tight corner. So I've got that going. And what I'm doing is I've got my backing all lined up. And as I go along, I'm doing this kind of thing and I'm holding it up. You're going to want to be sure, and I will cover this again, you're going to be want, wanting to be sure as you sew that your ease is right. So if you are a quilter or you sew garments, you know that ease is that extra surplus of material that you sometimes get when you have been sewing something and pulling just a little bit for a while. So you're pulling just a little bit. You're putting a little pressure as you go, 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 go. And then when the end, when you get to the end, you realize, all those little bits, tiny bits of pull you've done have created extra fabric. And you usually hit that, you usually encounter that the most at the end of your seam or at the end of your project if you're doing it all in one shot. So be careful about the ease. Be careful that you're lining up your backing fabric to your front fabric really well, really um, closely. One of the good things about this backing fabric is that it's like, it's got a little bit of a grid, it's a woven. So there's millions of little squares here and thus I can see lines. So when I can do line to line, what I like to do is forward, fast forward my thinking in my hands to the end of the corner and pin it. That's what the pins are for. I'm just gonna pin it so I know that my, my ease is going to be right on and I'm not gonna have a ton of extra. I'm just putting it there because I know that's where I should be. This is what I've got left to sew and that's where I should be. So why tempt Murphy into tricking me into doing a crazy diagonal or giving too much or too little ease? I'm going to hold it in place like this. And what the process is going to be, again, I will get into this in more detail, is taking a couple little stitches from the backing 
putting it through the burlap or linen or monk's cloth or whatever you've got in between loops in between loops right because if you tack a loop and then pull it down you're going to fold that that loop and it will be permanently down so you don't want to do that you only want to catch in between loops and pulling it through really really tightly and then going one stitch ahead some people do every other loop i do every loop because i'm that crazy and again stitching in between two loops pulling it right through this is like a whip stitch but not as regular and you really cannot see those threads disappearing into the backing and into the burlap and they are going to end up standing away from your uh, backing in a perfect way and of course they'll relax further too so the process is going to be all the way around this is the end game that you're going to be sitting and doing and it's not going to take as long as you think putting it through the backing and catching in between the next loops good bite into the backing and then in between the next loops coming up in between so you just keep catching and coming up in between and as you go it just gets more and more secure so secure that when you stuff something inside of it that's this size you would think as i did isn't it going to explode and rip open and atomize the thing that i've been working on forever incredibly it's not because the burlap is strong and if your backing is strong your thread is heavy duty that's strong too you've got a lot of stitches in if you're doing between every loop and even if you're doing between every other loop you've got a lot of stitches in and that's a lot of safety people put less stitches in your skin when you have an accident and you need stitches it holds it holds something this thick two inches it holds something thicker it's we're going to come to it but it's just a question of putting it in and then stitching around it i always start for myself with a project that has a top and a bottom i always start not on the bottom the last thing i'll do is the bottom i'll go up one side across the top down the other side and leave the bottom envelope open to put the thing up inside because if you are going to have an issue with ease with mess making with things not coming together exactly right at the end which they probably will but on the off chance they don't you might as well have any tiny bit of ugliness that's going to happen in the bottom of the pillow where no one's ever going to see it on that bottom seam with this technique you should not have ugliness there should not be problems this is just a very straightforward technique and a very secure technique but on the off chance why take a chance at making your top seam that's going to be sitting on the top of your sofa all the time have any issues put put everything around the top and sides and then think about the bottom last i'm going to put this video on pause and we're going to start um, prepping the next pillow so you can see really how to do it from beginning to end okay so we are getting ready to do a cushion from start to finish i'm not going to stitch the whole thing but we're going to prep for it, which is the part that most videos leave out that I think is the part that you really want to know. We know exactly what we need. We need to know what we're doing now. So what I've got now is a front that needs to be turned into a pillow. I've got a back already cut a couple of inches larger than the frame of this, the size of the pillow. And I've got a giant cushion that I know I've already measured and I'm planning on it being just a hair bigger all the way around than the piece itself. Again, if you want to wrap it in batting to make it a little bit fuller, if you want to try stuffing it in there first, and if it looks not full enough, you can add to it. Whatever combo is fine. It's not going to hurt the pillow or the backing if you take it out and put it back in, but plan on it being about the same size or a little bit bigger. So what I'm doing here is I've got my cushion and I need, I need to cut this piece in half uh, because I've got two pillows that need backing at this moment. So this is going to be real straightforward and monkey's work here. This is 24. So I'm going to make this, let's see, 12 and 12 and 12. 12. All right. This is just a Sharpie. Now I'm going to get a straight edge. You can see how professional everything is. Um, in my house, we just use whatever happens to be handy and it usually works incredibly. So I'm just drawing a straight line here or will it be a straight line? I think I was off with one of my marks, but I'm going to want to cut it right here along my line. I'm going to trust two out of three of my marks 
and this is how easy it's going to be to cut this thing. You don't need a jigsaw. You don't need a, even a man. You just need a kitchen knife. This, this is it's turning into a sexist video, and I don't mean for it to. Um, but I'm always amazed when I can do these kinds of things on my own because I always expect that you're going to need tools. I'm cutting right along the line. And I'll turn this around in a minute. I want to be sure I can see the line. But I'm cutting right down the middle. Right, and it's going, it's going real well. Right, this is just a kitchen knife and a piece of foam, and I am definitely winning. So here we go. It's gonna make it's gonna make a bunch of little balls of foam and, and garbagey stuff that you're gonna need to sweep up, but who cares? Once you get it done, you get it done. You got your two pillows, and there we go. Good enough. Is it jagged on the edge? Yeah. Does it matter? Doesn't matter at all. Could it matter less? It's gonna be inside a pillow. So I've broken my thing into two, and now I've got two of the same size cushions for my two pillows, <laughs> which is going to be perfect. So that is that is how professional and um, and how many degrees you need to cut a cushion in half. Just kitchen knife. There you go. Boom. Uh, focus rage. Cut it in half, and you're good. So I also at this moment cannot find my uh, sewing scissors, any of them. So doesn't matter. I'm going to do something scary anyway. Let me get my little lap thing. Where'd I put my little lap thing? Oh, just where it should be underneath. Um, all right, I'm gonna get this on my lap and let's do some of this business. I haven't switched to the over the shoulder camera yet because I haven't needed it. So let's see how this goes. So this is super scary. I mean, doing this for me is super scary too. I'm gonna cut this down to an inch or two off the finished piece. And man, it would be good if I had my normal sewing scissors, but I, I, I'm not going to spend time looking for them. This is Corona times. There's kids at home. It's insane. Everybody's electric and has cabin fever. And I just keep going with, with kitchen scissors. So I'm going to cut this all the way around just like this. And when I get to an edge, I'm just going to show you cause I'm not going to, well, why not? Right. Let's just cut all the way around together. I'm giving myself some extra slack. You can see at one time I had a nice finished edge so that my rug hooking didn't unravel, but um, it's all finished and we're beyond that. So now I'm just trying to make sure that there's not too much slack inside the edges of the pillow because then, um, you know, it could bunch up and look a bit crappy. So let's not tempt fate. Let's just trim everything down nice and trim. When I get to the corners, I'm, e I'm even gonna do something scarier and go like this. So it sits well on the corners. Now, I think I will put you on pause for just a second while I finish cutting this guy. Okay, so now I've trimmed out around the edge of my piece and I've got on my little board on my lap here. Um, you can see this is, this, is not, this is all jagged and crazy. The main thing is I just wanted to trim it down so that I can now flip it over and start prepping the edges. So, let me flip this over actually. I'm gonna flip from my sewing side to my pressing side of this little mat just for the purpose of this video. And I'm gonna start with my iron. And I'm just pressing it right around the edges. Why it's not steaming, who knows? There we go. So <laughs> pressing it like this and then when I get to the edges, I'm going to give it, if you can see this, a little poke in to make it a bit flat on the edges to be able to wrap it like that. That's like a gift wrapping trick, quilters trick. It's just a little whatever you need to do to make that thing lay as flat as possible on the corner, you do it. You want to get your, you see how I'm pressing here, make it so that when you're sewing, you've got your... You're backing right there that you can dig in between the loops um, and you don't have a lot of I don't want to I don't want to press it over here like this right because that would be too much extra you'd see the backing I'm pulling it as I go right up to the loops so the loops are standing kind of on their sides there and I'm only doing this so that when I'm sewing um, it just goes faster faster and easier if you had a backing material um, that wasn't polyester and was not woven the way mine is and ironed well, then I would say iron your backing too to prep that so they can they can do wrong side to wrong side together while you're stitching. 
but for me my my backing material doesn't want to do much so I just work it as I go the main thing is that your uh, linen monks cloth whatever your rug uh, backing is is pressed back and that the loops are standing out to the sides and it's going to be a nice flat piece that you're then ready to sew so again this is the back of it I'm going around the edges and I'm just pressing the edges so that the backing is well away and when I stitch together you won't actually see any of my linen here folding the corner a little bit just to get that out of the way this is something you just fiddle with it's different from piece to piece you fiddle with it until you feel that you've squared that corner off cleanly and if you are not happy with the way you've squared that corner off you will get another chance when you are sewing you can do something fancy with the needle and pull that corner right down this is not this is not the end of this pressing part this is just prepping it so it's easier and faster for you when you get ready to do your sewing which is going to be the next step i'm just going to keep you with me while i'm going around here i've already pressed this piece i've already blocked this piece and I'm on my last corner here i'm going to fold that sucker in and there we go we got our last corner And this is not something that I spent, as you can see, you, you're with me in real time. This is not something I spent hours on. This is something I spent two minutes on, just pressing these corners. So I've got that done. Let me get rid of that before it sets the house on fire. I've got that done. So what I've got now is my pillow front, my pillow back. It's all squared off. Nice clean edges. I've uh, pressed them behind. And now, let's see, I, I know I'm going to have to switch to the over-the-shoulder camera in a second, but I'm going to see how long I can do this until I have to. So, finished piece ready. I'm going to do this because you can probably see better. And I want to leave the bottom open because that's where I'm going to put the pillow. So I'm flipping it over, knowing I'm going to, for myself, being right-handed, I'm going to start with this side and go around. So I'm just going to position this on top. I'm going to fold. This, this is a ratty edge too, but it's going to get folded under. Just make sure you don't have tons and tons of extra. It's going to get folded under. And I know I'm going to start my sewing here on this bottom corner, leaving the bottom open. So I'm going to grab a pin. Oh, punchline. The pin's all fell. All right, let me grab a pin here. And I'm going to pin this in place. And then we're going to go to the over the shoulder camera. I'm pinning this corner that I'm going to start with in place and I'm going to put you on hold while I look for my other pin so I can pin this side right up. And then we're just going to start stitching this side. Here we go. Okay. So now I'm on the over the, ca the shoulder camera thing. So you can see some close ups and just threading my needle. I'm going to give, probably three or four knots to the heavy duty thread just to be sure it stays in place. You know, the linen is wonderful and tight, but it's not so tight that a knot can't slip through it. So give yourself a few knots in there. I think you can see this. I even zipped up my shirt so you didn't have a view right of my boobs and of the piece instead, which I thought might be better. Um, so I've got my needle ready and I've got the pin in that we just put in. Now what I'm gonna do to prep for myself is just fold this side down. Remember about the ease. You don't want it bubbling in the middle and creating extra ease. So I'm going to move along to the edge and just put this pin in place here because then I know that's kind of what I'm shooting for is that kind of slack. Uh, it's pretty even and flat and I'm looking at the way my material goes. Um, hopefully you can see it with enough light there. Let me see if I can get any closer. There we go. So corners are always tough because you need to reinforce them. So I've got, I'm pulling my pin out here and I'm even with my finger going to wrap this down a little bit tighter. I'm going to come up into the side. I'm not going to hit the wool or anything like that yet. I'm going to come up into the side and just, I did hit the wool. So that was good. Let me go back down. Doesn't, doesn't really matter at this point. I'm going to come back down here. Now I've got an instant knot. There we go. So 
I'm going to move this along here and I'm going to do my first stitches with the backing. I'm going to come just take a couple of these threads there. I'm going to get this out of the way because he's already causing trouble. And I'm going to come along here and I'm going to put a couple of, this is just my heavy duty thread knot and up. There we go. A couple stitches into that backing right at that corner, trying really hard not to catch that wool because it's sticking right up there. You're going to get caught on a lot of stuff, especially at the corners, but there we go. That's a start. So I'm lining up the next stitches and I want this backing to pretty much cover that. So I'm going to do, this is actually the reverse of how I like to do it. Um, I like to do it with the backing toward me. I'm going to grab a couple bits of backing and I'm going to come up between two loops, between two loops. I think I probably just covered that there. I'm going to grab a couple more. I'm going to go into the backing and come up between the next two loops. And this is going to fool with you and, and um, make little loops and knots the whole way along. Just be patient with it. You, you don't want your thread to be too um, short. You want it to be thick so you don't have to keep changing it every five seconds. So you just have to put up with the little knots and loops. I'm hiding with my needle. I'm pushing underneath the backing so it gets less and less visible. I have another chance at that corner to hide that piece and I'm coming up between two other loops again. I'm doing this in reverse so it's a little bit tricky for me but you see it gets caught on stuff and it will continue to do that because most of your wool strips are going to end at the edges so there's lots of things to get caught on. You just have to be careful about pulling things tight and you will get momentum. So I'm going a couple more stitches over up into the middle Again, I've seen people do this and just come up between every other row of loops. I come up between every loop. I'm just, I have to do everything overkill, but you don't. If you are happy, see there's another knot. It's just fiddly, especially when you're working in reverse here. That's a good knot that time. It's a double. It's like I started braiding something here. Jiminy Cricket. I'm going to put you on pause for a second while I fool with this. Okay, I switched to the other side because for me, I find when the backing is facing me and I can see the texture and the, the little squares here that I can count almost, that works better for me. So I started again on this side. I'm just tucking under my knot for now. I'm going to deal with that later. And I'm pushing under with my needle some of the backing. And I'm going to start my first stitches again in between. I'm on the opposite corner, starting again just for the sake of this video. And so... I'm repeating this, which is not a bad thing to repeat because the corners have to be very, very, very strong when you're stuffing that giant marshmallow pillow in there. The corners are going to take all of the brunt of that stuffing. Not the top corners, the bottom corners, right under your envelope thing. Here we go again. Can you believe this? This is not a good ad for this thread. Let's see. There we go. Bear with me for a sec. There we go. I'm going to cut the tail out of the way because this is going to drive us out of our flipping minds if it hasn't already. There we go. Let's get some momentum. Cut that corner piece in. I'm going to go grab a couple threads from here and I'm going to go in between the next loops. Right up into the backing. Pull through real tight. Grab a couple more loops up into the next gap between the loops. Grab a couple of threads over here, up to the next gap between the next two sets of loops. Again, it is up to you how often you want to put this needle into your backing. If it's every row, every other row, it depends on how um, tight and stuffed the pillow is going to be. As I go, I kind of push forward to get the, this is just something you kind of have to finesse with your own pillow to get the backing covering right up to the edge. I want it to be right up to the edge. So I'm kind of tucking as I go, taking those two loops and dragging them with me up onto the backing between the two loops. And yeah, you can see a little bit of uh, a few of the threads, but you will. I mean, you're attaching two things and I'm not using piping or anything as a decorative sort of barrier. Um, the main thing is the threads are in there well, 
because people are not going to fool with looking at your seam. They're going to sit on it or rest against it, and you do not want it to explode. You want to be sure you've done a nice job with this part, grabbing a couple of the threads of your back cloth and coming up between the loops, between the loops. And that can be tricky. Some of my loops are closer than others. Um, they're not all perfectly uniform. So I'm just going to keep doing this, the grabbing a couple pieces of the backing and coming up between the loops. I'm going to do this all the way around. As you can see already, I've done that much of it so far, and that's not going to go anywhere. When this is together, this is going to be a nice clean front for this, and that's going to be, the backing is on there really, really well. When we stuff a pillow in, you're going to see how well it's on there. I'm going to finish the other backing now because I'm almost through with that one and then stuff the pillow in to show you. I just wanted to show you how to start on this one, making it very, very, very strong on the corner and stitching up as you go, grabbing a little bit of the backing and going in between the loops, a little bit more backing in between the next loop, a little bit more backing in between the next loop, all the way around. So I'm going to put you on pause and we're going to finish the other pillow. It's worth saying, I'm back to the other pillow, finishing this one up for you because I have more of a head start. When you cut off and you need to re-thread, um, I always hide the thread by doubling it up like this in between the folds or right behind the folds in the backing. I do this regardless when I'm sewing. I've got my other one ready to go here. I'm just gonna make this point. Um, I'm starting a new thread here in between. I'm starting it in the back in between two loops okay and i'm tucking it back here again so we don't have any foolishness with that now this is the part you know grabbing a few threads from the backing and coming up between the next set of loops i'm going to do this a few times and then i'm going to show you another little trick very obvious that you probably would have done on your own regardless but i'll just say it out loud so that it makes a reminder. I'm just going to make a little progress here. Grabbing loops coming up in between. Now on the next loop, I'm just going to anchor it a little bit. This is something I do no matter what I'm sewing. I like to anchor things uh, here and there. So I'm going to come up and anchor this just to be sure. I'm going to just tie. I'm not tying off. I'm not ending the thread. I'm tying a knot. See how hard I press that into the thing there. I'm, I'm tying it off in here just in case it were ever to start to unravel the whole thing wouldn't unravel if you anchor it part way so i'm just putting a knot in between two loops that will be invisible when the loops come back up and that's just an that's just an added strength for it again should they ever start to um, unravel the top and bottom of your pillow here so i'm just making my way across with normal stitches again probably every 10 or 20 stitches i make a little anchor loop like that in between just knot it and keep going with the same thread just as a preventative stitch in nine type uh, thought so i guess i'll put you on hold again you can see once you get momentum going you've got i've got my back pinned right here so that's what i'm working up to you get some real speed going you got to figure out for yourself what what is the best way to work i like leaning over it like this from a distance and having the backing on the on the downside, on the knee side, and having the rug part on top so I can see the loops. You might figure that something else works faster and better for you, and if that's the case, you have to go with that. You just figure out what's comfortable, what makes sense intuitively, according to your body, your setup, uh, and the way that you work. It will be different than the way I work, but for me, this, this is the best way for me to see and move quickly. So I'm going to put you on hold again while I work around this side and come over to the edge. Okay, so I'm unpausing again because I'm, I'm getting to the end of this thread and I'm needing to re-thread. So I'm always going to want to, if I can, uh, tie my knots on the back. So I'm pushing the needle through so that the knot will end up behind. And then, just like when I'm starting, I'm just tying three, four, five, six knots and they're going to fall behind so that you're not going to be able to see them. They're going to fall in here, just around the corner, and they're going to get sucked up behind the 
backing and you will not see the giant knot that you ended off on. I'm gonna do one more knot and then I'm gonna do the corner. So I'm gonna tuck the ends of that back there or you cut them off, it doesn't make any difference. Just make sure that knot is hiding under there because I'm about to approach the corner now. So let's get threaded up. Uh, the, the corner is going to be the trickiest part, as you can imagine. The two trickiest parts of this are going to be doing the corners, that is uh, low to moderate difficulty, and stuffing the pillow in and getting that fourth edge on, the fourth wall there, is the trickiest part. It's just fiddly. Uh, there are parts of every project, as you know this as a crafter, that will fight you, but don't let yourself get defeated by them. They're simple problems that have simple answers, and things that are fiddly are the absolute worst um, and for that reason alone, don't let them defeat you. Just, just um, practice. I'm coming up again to start this off behind, and I'm going to come up between loops so that my knot's in the back. I'm quickly approaching the corner, and I'm pressing in the backing, coming up behind and between loops, pressing the backing under so there's as little of a gap showing between the front and the backing as possible. Coming up a couple stitches later, between the next two loops. As I approach the corner, I'm thinking about how best to deal with it. It might be different from corner to corner. I'm closing this little gap here. It's going nicely. Oop, caught that purple tail. Okay, we're right upon the corner now. So we need, we are at the crossroads of our lives and we need to make a decision about how to handle this particular corner. My choice is to simply First of all, it's not simple. I want to cut this down, right? And I use my stupid kitchen scissors again. Let's cut this way back because I have way too much fabric here. There. First problem solved. I can either tuck this in like this or I can fold it under like this, like I did with the top one, doing a, I could do like this and tuck it. You might have a little bit of a hole there to fill. Or I can do like I did with the burlap corners here and tuck it in diagonally first. Fiddle, fiddle factor a little bit higher. And I screwed that one up good. Tuck it on a diagonal and then tuck it. And that usually works better. The fiddle factor is there and it's active. It's very active. So active that I think I'm just going to give it a squared corner. It will be different from corner to corner. You have to see what you've got to pair up here. This is going to work out just fine. I literally just folded this down, tucked it behind. I can see exactly where I'm going. I can see that it's going to be nice and square. I am thinking about getting this part secure and getting a pin in there, but right now my thumb is here. And if you sew, you know, strike while the iron's hot. Everything is in place. I'm going to get the next stitch in there, pull it tight. Now I am in the corner. I'm coming up behind my wool strips. And I'm going to actually come up twice in the same place because the corner uh, won't need it won't need particular reinforcement because I, I bet you anything that your cushion will not be touching the inside of the corner. But you want to be sure that the corner looks nice. You want to be sure your threads are pulling even. I don't want to I don't want to tack a stitch into the absolute corner. Now I'm coming up here, and once I let my finger down these wool strippies are going to cover that corner anyway. I just made my way around the corner with probably two extra stitches. I don't want to let it go too much because I've got everything folded up perfectly here and I've got myself all set up, as you can see, for the next stretch, the home stretch. So now that the corner is secure and nicely squared off, I'm doing my same stitch of going every couple threads from the back cloth, the backing, and going in between the loops, coming up in between, so I'm not tacking down any loops and changing their directional flow. That will change the look. And I'm just shooting along the edges here, in between loops, putting stitches in. I'm going to work to the edge here. I'm going to put it, I'll do this with you. I'm going to put a Thinking about the ease again, not wanting to get too much ease. So I'm going to tack a pin in here. 
That's my next milestone. And I'm going to work this little bit. I'm going to unpin. I'm going to make sure we are nice and straight and flush to the edge. And once I get here, I'm going to stop because it's going to be time for us to load that pillow in at that point. Okay, so I am on my third corner. This is the final part of the um, stitching around before we're doing the envelope part, putting the cushion in between. And I'm putting a couple extra stitches into the third corner because it's going to take a lot of stress when I stuff that form inside the cushion. That's going to be my next move. Put a couple extra stitches. I've got about four stitches in that corner now. I'm going to tie that up, anchor off, but I'm not going to get rid of my needle. There's no reason to. I'm just going to anchor off here. And let's see what happens next. So, let's see if I can back you up a little bit. Whoops. Oh, I love technology. I love it. You know, I'm going to put you on the other camera. There we go. We are ready for the fight to begin. So, I have sewn. I'm going to take my, my needle still attached, so I'm just going to... Stick it in between loops here to keep it safe and handy. I have sewn these three corners and I've got the bottom open. So I have one of these cushion forms. Oh, you know what? I forgot to cut the other side. Here we go, look. I'm gonna need to cut the other side. So this could be a good exercise. Every stupid thing I do is a good exercise in, in learning uh, for me too, because I do a lot of stupid things. I'm gonna now take the Sharpie and I don't want to run it too close to my thingy. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to run a line like this. Let's cut that one more time. See if we can get that inside there. Let's see. Part two, cutting cushions. It's a bummer to have any leftover foam because of what it costs, but since this was a bargain, occasionally you get that nice person at Joann's or Michael's that tells you something is on sale or that it's about to be on sale or was on sale and they'll still do the deal. I got that person yesterday. I usually don't get that person. I got her yesterday. She is a buddy. There. So let's see what we can do here. This, this part will be uh, the worst part. <laughs> this is the having the baby part. Um, super frustrating. I'm going to kind of weasel it in. When I put strain on it, I'm going to, the part I'm going to put strain on is the front, the rug part. It's not the seam part. If that doesn't make sense, it will while you're doing it. I'm going to squeeze it and ease it as I go. Try to fold it, get some distance going. Try to fold it all the way around. You've got to fiddle it. Each, uh, each one is going to put up a different kind of fight. Hold it and get it in as far as I can, and then I'll start to weasel the edges. So I'm going to try to pop that into the edge, to the corners, as much as I can. And incredibly, it is. Now, as with all these kinds of projects, you got to fool with every part of it. You really want to get the edges in line. What I've got right now is a pillow that's doing a roly polio, right? So what I want to do is get in here and move that edge right onto my seam. And I want to make sure this side's doing it too. I'm going to move that edge, curl it around. You only have to do this once because once it's in place, it's in place. Get it right into the corners. I'm pulling it. My hand is right on the corner in there now pushing the damn thing right in there and there it goes so we are good this looks like um it's going to be trouble now and it, it will be a little bit of trouble this is where the fiddliness really happens but if you are here with me and you have got your pillow form in there and you are looking at your edges and going this is fine this is going to work then you are in a good place of course it's going to relax too but I've got the cushion in there in a way now that it's pretty flat it's going to become more flat as it relaxes it's it's just been introduced into its new home and um, yeah it's pretty squared off in there I'm gonna put my hand in one more time you see the edges are gonna be fine 
just make sure everything is square. This is your chance while it's still open to fiddle everything so you get nice straight lines and to get it as far into the corners as you can. I'm going to make one more mammoth attempt to push into these corners. Corners, of course, nobody is putting any weight on the actual corner, but you just want to be sure it's in there square. That's about the best it can be. One of the other things you're going to need to do, I'm going to come back to finishing this last part, but one of the other things you're going to need to do at some point is, if you're like me and you haven't done this yet, you you find all kinds of little bits and pieces that you haven't trimmed yet. I do a nice kind of manicure thing on the whole um, pillow top but somehow I don't think about the edges until the end and when you finish it or you turn something into a cushion like this you realize some of your edges are longer so I will go through at the end and actually trim the edges even more to make sure I don't have any really big tails sticking out like that one I'll do a really nice trim at the end but this seems to be pretty happy pillow front and back working out so here comes the fun part. This is where I need to close this gap. And there's that foam. I'm going to do something like this. I know I'm going to want to bring this edge up to tuck in here. And it will be fiddly. And it will take pinning. But... It is going to work and it is going to be gorgeous when it works. It's going to be this. I probably made a bit to this backing. I probably made should have left it just a little bit more. I trim everything way back, but you want it to be snug. You don't want to have a lot of slack with the pillow. I think that's going to be fine. The way I'm holding it here, just for myself to know, that means that that one is going to reach around about halfway the way that, you know, the other three sides are doing and that should be fine. I feel confident and I feel good with that. I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure on the closing part of it as I sew. And you are too. And that is the fiddly part. So I've still got this thread going here. Set him free. I'm going to tuck in a bit there. And I'm going to get ready to tucking this corner in like gift wrap. Like that. Now I'm going to get ready to Close the gap here. And it is fiddly because this is the last edge. Now I don't really want to seem like that, so I need to rethink that. I need to rethink that. Let me see what I can do. Folding that and folding this. I want it to look exactly like the other three corners, like that. Right? How did I do that? By fooling with it. I did it by fooling with it. It's it's not, when you are on this fourth side and you are fighting with the, the mass of the pillow fitting inside of this thing, um, it's gonna be a fight. It didn't take that long. Yours will not take that long. You just gotta get it, that perfect corner so that you can get your needle back in, which I'm doing now. I'm tucking with my needle as I go. I'm going to grab some of the backing fabric and I'm going to come up between the loops. Never forget about between the loops. I'm sure you haven't because you've stitched between a thousand loops at this point. This really is not a time consuming project at all. It really isn't. I've only put you on pause for a few minutes all in all. I got that corner in and I'm moving to the next stitch and the next loop and I got that corner in. And I'm tucking with my needle as I go. I'm tucking my needle under to get that backing I'm sorry, the, the rug hooking backing under, not the backing of the pillow. And I'm catching some of the threads of the actual backing and pulling it in between the loops. And incredibly, despite the stress and the fiddliness of the situation, it is stitching up exactly the same way it's stitched up on the other three sides. It's just my left hand, because I'm right-handed, is holding the pillow shut at this point. But once I get to a certain point, the pillow will hold itself shut and I will just be using my hand as a placeholder. So I am now here. I'm not going to put pins in right now. You can if you want. Um, I'm, I'm used enough to sewing to get a feel for what my hand needs to do. 
and it will just slow me down and possibly uh, give me opportunities to get hurt if I start putting pins in at this point. If you just got it with your left hand and you are putting in your in between the loop stitches with your right hand, then you are doing everything right. I'm going to anchor up in a minute. Just making sure things are very secure. This side is not holding any more of the tension um, or stress than any other side. It's just this is the last side that you're doing, so you're going to have a hard time sewing this side. It's only one out of four, and when you're done, you're done. And it's going to be gorgeous, and it's going to be secure, and it is not going to pop open. There's no chance if you are stitching it the way that I'm stitching it that this is going to pop open, even if Dumbo the Elephant jumps on it or Jumbo or whoever he was. I'm going to anchor this because I can see that it's in a good enough spot. I'm going to still hold it so I don't put too much stress on the backing. You can see that it's in a good enough spot. I'm coming around that corner, and you can see it's fine. You can see how well it's meeting up with the front. Probably trim that little guy there, but it's going fine. I'm going to keep pressing. I've got a bit of a lump here because I haven't uh, pressed this part yet. I'm going to put you on hold while I continue to equally pull the front part in and push. Try to keep your seams flat in there too. You're going to get a little ripple. Pull the front part in and push the top part out. You know what? I think I will put a pin in just so I can take my hand away. Right? It's probably going to break in half and fly up and hit me in the eyeball. Didn't. So I'm going to stitch this little part the same way I've been stitching. And right up into the end, I'm going to pull this part forward, fold this part under, and make them meet. And it's going to be like that all the way to the end. And then we'll finish the end together, and we will be there. Okay, we are on the absolute home stretch at this point. I am doing more tucking and folding under and stitching. And because this is the final sign, and because at this moment, while it's still partially open, um, it is taking a bit more stress than the other three sides, just while we're sewing it. And for that reason, I've put in more stitches than usual. I've probably put in every um, third stitch I double up or something like to that effect, just to give it a little extra strength. I'm just doing my routine, catching stitches, and going up in between loops right to the end of the fourth side. And my finger, I've got the pin in there. Uh, my finger is holding it in place. I'm just making sure that, you know, my backing, the, the backing of the rug hooked part is as invisible as possible. So I'm pinching as I go. And I will say, this is hard on your fingers. I forgot about that part of it. It is hard on your fingers. It, your fingertips will hurt. Um, the only thing I can equate it to is I, I worked in the theater for years. I have a degree in costume construction and we used to sew a lot of hats for the stage, like straw hats where you'd have to do a lot of pulling and pushing and guiding with your fingers for hours and your fingertips hurt. And this is the exact same kind of thing. You're doing the same motions and um, yeah, you're, there's nothing you can do with thimbles that can prevent it. It's just gonna be a bit of a push. It's, a, it's, a, it's not hard on your wrists. It's not hard on anything but your fingertips. But in the end, we get there. Now, how long should this pillow back take you? If this is your first pillow back and it's about, this pillow is about, I think, 13 by 14 or 15. Um, the first time around, it's probably going to take you an hour. It might even take you two hours because you might be a perfectionist and you're fooling with the backing and the pinching and making sure there's not one speck or uh, square anything of the backing showing. You might be panicking because you caught a couple of little loops in there and you needed to backtrack and try to undo that. It could take you an hour. It could take you two hours. Um, when you do your second one, will the second one take less time? Of, co of course it will, but it might still take 45 minutes because there's a lot of work to do here. Um, the good thing is a pillow is so forgiving once it's done. Once it's stitched strong and well, it's done. You are not going to think about this in your lifetime again. It's not going to explode. Um, does it get easier? Of course it gets easier. Everything like this that requires practice gets easier. 
I'm folding my last side down, as you can see here, and doing the last piece of fiddliness. Now, this is the selvage edge, which does have like a uh, like textured little trim on it. So I got to be careful about how I tuck that, but tucked it in there, and we're doing it well there. Um, halt and stretch. Does it get easier? Of course, it gets easier. Uh, every time you do it, it gets easier. So don't give up. Go for a second one. It's it's um, it's it's a project you can tackle. These pillows will always make nice gifts. It's a very small piece of rug hooking that you can, if you're a hooker already, you can do easily. And then you just have to master putting this backing on and it's just fiddly. Um, and that's all. It does get better. Will you always dread getting to this final uh, fourth side and having to do this part? Yeah, you will always dread this part because this is the hard part. And this is the part that um, takes a lot of concentration and it takes the strength out of your fingertips and it will always be a bummer getting to the fourth edge, but the sort of rainbow where the light at the end of the tunnel is when you're here, you know, you're almost done. I am almost done and I'm coming up to, I'm watching that final fold that that doesn't trip me up this final little corner here. I'm coming right up to the very end and the hard part is over now because I can feel the pillow has relaxed and I've gotten past the part of the tension. I'm not really doubling up my stitches anymore, just not for strength or anything. I'm just doing one in between every loop tucking as I go, making sure that's tucked nicely because I want it to match all of the other four corners. Again, this is just a carpet needle, backing of my choice, strong, something that doesn't fray easily, and um, heavy duty thread, not waxed, just heavy duty thread. And here is the last stitch. I'm gonna make two of those just to be sure it's perfect. And I am going to break my own rule and tie it off. Well, I'm going to tie it off right on the corner underneath. You got to choose these things as you go. You got to choose your um, position for tying off. You're going to have a tiny, tiny little knot, but remember, it's got to be something like four or five times knotted. I always do two tails at the end. That's just the way I do. I I do it. You can always hook hook it up, tie it up with a needle, but um, you know you'll probably scratch yourself. This works fine. You just got to do it many, many, many times. And you've already got a lot of height with your loop standing up. So nobody's going to see this final little knot when I trim it down. And there it is. I'm going to trim that right down. And there we go. It's not even as tall as the other little guys. So we did it. And it really wasn't that bad. Um, I'm going to trim the edges along here and make sure that there's none that are sticking up too much. See, I can see a little guy right here. He wants to stick up. I'm going to trim him down. But at the end of the day, this is for a church pew. It's two to three inches thick. Get rid of your foam. It's on there for life. Super durable. Haven't used any unusual supplies. It wraps itself right around pretty well. And again, I stitched the top sides first. Uh, you know, if you were putting it on your couch, you'd do something like this, and the bottom edge would be hidden anyway. So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. This is super simple, making a hooked rug into a, a small hooked rug piece into a cushion. Super simple. And um, after about an hour's work, you have an eternal heirloom that anybody will love seeing and sitting on and squishing and whatever else, whatever else you like. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a long one. And if you've gotten to the end with me, you must be making a pillow because otherwise it would be the most boring video in the history of videos. I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Bye-bye. Extreme close-up of doing this for the end. Trying to avoid the camera here. I'm going to tack a couple threads here go in between the next loops and then you'll see it disappears into the loops get a couple more seeing this is where you can decide do I want to do it into the next one like I do every loop or do you want to do it in every second one now I'm pushing this under the backing of the rug hooking I'm pushing under get a couple of those this time I'm going to just show you every other so I'm going to shoot over here. It's a longer stitch. It's the same principle. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do every other on corner. I'm going to go back to the next one here. I want to be sure it's real secure. But you can see I'm catching every 
second one or so and then I'm coming up in between loops and you can see when you pull it you really can't see that that stitch is there it's pretty pretty well hidden I'll just do a couple more grabbing a couple threads from the backing fabric not the rug hooking backing not the linen I went two loops that time I don't want to catch the tops of any loops because I'll pull them down under and change the direction of the looping. But with your needle, you can weasel like that and push stuff down so you have better access to this little valley in between the loops. All right, I think that's probably good for close-up.